good morning my name is navin agarwal so today we learn about the software processes the main objective is to introduce software process models that is why these are required and to describe the three generic process models and when they may be used so why do we require a software process so we know that whenever we have to develop a software for a particular organizations we need to do certain set of activities so we need to do this activity in a structured manner so this software process model define that structure which we can follow uh, to develop a particular software so the main set of activities that are required to develop a software system are specification design validation and evolution so the specification part we actually define what actually we require in a software and uh, so this specification actually comes from the client end so what actually they want to develop normally we sign an agreement with the client before actually start developing the software so based on this specification we design the different components of a software which would be <coughs> used in a software and uh, which will be finally be uh, deployed at the client end before deploying we need to validate whether these components which we have developed are as per spec specification or not and after deployment again we need to provide the maintenance so software uh, may change so evolution of the software take takes care that if there are any changes which can be addressed in a future so in in a short we can say that a software process model is an abstract representation of a process it presents a description of a process from some particular perspective so there are three generic process models even though there are many models which we can use but we can categorize in the different uh, uh, generic software process models the first model is a waterfall model and the second is the evolutionary development model the third is a component based software engineering so <coughs> there are many variants of these models so in the waterfall models we have the separate and distinct phases of specification and development so when one phase is going on we cannot change it and uh, we have to complete it and only then we can start the second phase in the evolution development so specification development and validations are interleaved and they evolve over the period of time so software is sometimes divided into different components and they evolve over the period of time in the component based software engineering so here the system is assembled from the existing components so this is used where the company is using the many object oriented components which are already developed for the different softwares and those components are customized and reused again so the all of these three generic models have their variants and uh, some of these are uh, defined as per the requirements of a domain so <coughs> basically these are defined through several stages and depending upon the design of a particular software so we start with the waterfall model so as we can see in this figure so we have the requirements definitions this is the first phase where actually we capture the requirements of a client then whatever uh, deliverables are out of this like the software requirement specification document this is given to the second team so which covers the design part of this software and after preparing a design this the coding is done and the unit testing of individual module is done which is finally integrated as per the specification and finally the whole system is tested before it is given to the user for the operation and the maintenance <coughs> in a normal classical waterfall model we cannot move back from one stage to the previous stage and <coughs> so that is the main limitation of this model as well but in the iterative waterfall model we can always move back and we can go back to the previous stage if we found any error let's say we found an error during coding that some design components are not good so we can always go back and then can come back again so that is the main difference between the iterative waterfall model and the classical waterfall model so there are five phases which are mainly there in the waterfall model requirement analysis system and software design implementation and unit testing integration and system testing and operational maintenance so main drawback is we cannot go back and it is very difficult to accommodate any change after the one of the step is completed so the main problems we 